So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to do a reflected ceiling plan or RCP as we refer to it often, mostly. Um, so what I've got here is a piece of tracing paper and you'll place this directly over the top of your floor plan. So you can see that it's important to have that floor plan finished before you go on and do your RCP. So once you have that over the top, you're going to be tracing the wall, the perimeter of the walls. I'll just pop a bit of white paper underneath so you can clearly see it uh, as distinguished from the, um, the floor plan underneath. Um, you're tracing the floor plan, but you're not actually placing in the doors and uh, windows into the walls. So like if you think about a uh, floor plan being like a cross section of the building at around um, 1000 or 1200 and it's showing everything underneath, the reflected ceiling plan is the same. It's like a, a um, cross section of the building, but it's showing everything above. So often what will happen is if you're cutting through at 100 below the ceiling, you're actually not cutting through the door and the window, uh, unless you are, of course, unless it's a um, floor to ceiling door or window, um, then you would show it. Um, so yeah, in my case, I'm not showing that doorway there. Um, I'm showing the thickness of the walls. Some reflected, um, some people's standards, I suppose, or ways of doing it, they only have the inside wall. They actually don't even show the thickness of the walls. So it'll depend on the um, design office that you work with, what their, what their guidelines or standards are and how they, they do it. They'll have a, um, a, a set way of doing it. So we're teaching you uh, one way, but don't be surprised if you you go and work somewhere and, and they do teach you something else, it all depends. So um, I've got my walls in and yeah, like I was saying, with your reflected ceiling plan, it is as if we're um, uh, putting a mirror up and reflecting everything that's on the uh, ceiling. So basically it's, it's exactly the same way around and everything is just placed over the top. It's really good to view it this way because you can see the context of the room below and you know where my pendant for example is sitting in relation to my bath, where my lighting is sitting in relation to um, this basin etc. So um, when I moved into this apartment it only had um, these two no, sorry, these two down lights to light the whole space. And so that meant looking into the mirror here, I couldn't see what I was doing and it was very dark over here too. So I had um, an electrician install two more down lights and I have this one positioned exactly over the basin here, which is white as you know. And so that ref what that does is reflect light back into the face. So if you're shaving or putting on makeup or whatever, you've got much better light there um, to do that. Um, side lighting is quite a, sort of ideal, really. However, with the mirror covered, that's not really possible. So um, one alternative is that. Anyway, that's um, not what we're here to do. We're here to draw. Um, so yeah, but the, you can see the context of, my point was but you can see the context of uh, lighting and whatever's coming from the ceiling uh, in relation to whatever is underneath. Um, so what we, what we do is um, give a symbol for every, everything that's on the ceiling. So just uh, remind you again of our drafting guidelines. Um, there's a page in that, it's page 12, that has a bunch of symbols in. So for example, I can see here my downlight, 
Um, if we were doing the classroom at RMIT, you'd be doing speakers, there'd be modems and all sorts. It's a quite a uh, complex ceiling. Um, so yeah, have a look at the students' work. You can see that they've listed every or put it, um, indicated where every ceiling tile is on the ceiling. Um, and then a whole bunch of things um, that we don't have in our bathrooms. So in some ways you've gotten out of this a little easier because there's not um, so much to reference. However, um, yeah, make sure you do it quite accurately and yeah, these uh, symbols you can um, make up if you get to the end and as we do when we do the classroom, you can make up your own symbols as long as it's all clear and listed in um, the legend here on your page. So um, these ones are the switches. So that's um, this one here, which is a circle with this little... Um, leg on it and so here's just a single switch you might have a two-way switch so that'll be um, where maybe you can turn it on from another side of the room say you had a bathroom that was had shared access from from two sides of the room um, that might happen in a bathroom but obviously in um, more likely in living areas that kind of thing um, so, um, our switches here are just located on the wall and this is often a giveaway of where your door is because usually the switches are located near the door in uh, any good design they are. And then these little um, dotted lines indicate what is linked to that switch. So when I turn that switch on, it turns this light on and this light on over here. It's not super ideal, but um, that's that's the way it is. And then this switch here switches on these two. They're on the one link. So in the case of um, RMIT classroom, there's whole all of these banks of lights are all connected. So, and there's a couple of switches for different banks of lights, as you might remember. So that gets a bit more complex. But for us, we've got, or for me, I've got two lots of down lights, and I've also got a pendant light over here, and I have a ceiling fan. So you guys might only have um, one or two lights and a ceiling fan. Um, I've got a sprinkler, course that's not connected electrically to anything that's just sitting there because I live in an apartment um, and the other thing I've got is a shower rose now mine is connected to the ceiling that's why I've got it on here if yours is attached to the wall you won't have your shower rose um, on your your ceiling on your reflected ceiling plan so the last thing I have is a manhole just inside um, the doorway. So I've indicated that there by its size just with an M. So that's um, an example of making up a little symbol in your um, legend there. Um, the other thing that I have on my reflected ceiling plan is the height of the ceiling. So we put that in a little box just like that. Um, so I've kind of lined it up here because there was a bit of a blank space there and then just lined it up there. Um, yeah, we, we try to avoid this crossing over if possible, um, but it was absolutely impossible for me to not um because these two are connected is to not cross so um and it's harder to do these dotted lines neatly harder than you might think um i to get some of my curves i have used 
um, that to help. Um, but I didn't quite have the right angle a lot of the time. I do have a little blue bendy wire thing that I haven't got here, but I might try to get and bring in and show you in one of these um, videos that can be really handy for doing this when we come to inking it up. Um, so yeah, that's we indicate that with that dotted line, how that though those electrical things are connected. Um, so I've begun to put my dimension lines in, but I've left that because um, it gets a little confusing and I wanted to just show you the drawing at this stage before we got um, down to the dimensioning. So it's just a bit clearer to explain it to you. Um, Make sure you look at the student examples online too uh, for further information. Um, we could do some more general notes here about um, what uh, maybe the height of the uh, switches, how they're, where they're located. I might do that, um, but maybe I'll do that when we come back and look at the um, dimensioning. So, so the first step to do is just like you did with your floor plan, do a little um, diagram of your measurements, where things are located, and then begin to trace over your floor plan to uh, start off with your reflected ceiling plan.